Welcome back everyone. We are the Doctors Bjorkman, a physician couple putting our medical expertise to the test as we experience pregnancy for the first time ourselves. And this week we want to talk about something that's important to think about before baby comes and that is choosing a pediatrician. So stay tuned. We are going to cover the key things to consider when making this decision for your little baby. So for anyone who hasn't met us yet, I'm Dr. Sarah Bjorkman, I'm an OBGYN, and I am also 20 weeks pregnant. And I am her husband, Dr. Kurt Bjorkman, I'm a board certified pediatrician. And as we've been going week by week through pregnancy, we thought it'd be great to take this week to talk specifically about how to choose a pediatric provider for your baby. Yeah. So if you are anything like me, which I'm guessing that you are, if you are watching this video, you like to plan ahead. Yeah. And as it is, the general recommendation is that it's best to reach out to the person that's going to be the pro medical provider for your baby mm -hmm. when mama's about 30 weeks pregnant or at the start of the third trimester. So our hope is that by giving you that information this week, it gives you lots of time to think about, ask around, and plan for making that phone call at around 30 weeks. Yeah. So we are going to be talking about different types of pediatric providers, how to find the best pediatric provider in your area, and then questions that you are going to want to ask when you are making that decision. As a soon-to-be mama, I can honestly say that I am more concerned about who is going to be my baby's doctor than figuring out who is going to be my OB. So to start this discussion, let's talk about the different types of pediatric providers that see kids and babies. Yeah, so the options are pretty straightforward. There are pediatricians, okay. family doctors, mm -hmm. pediatric nurse practitioners, or pediatric physician associates, physician assistants. And depending on where you live, um, those different options may be limited or not available to you, but we want you to be informed about what all the available options are so you can make the best decision for your family. So let's start by talking about what it takes to become a board certified pediatrician. Um, so these medical providers have done four years of medical school and then after that have done at least three years of specialized medical residency in just pediatrics where they specialize in everything from birth uh, through adolescence and into the early 20s. Um, these people during their training, they spend time in newborn nurseries, outpatient clinics, neonatal and pediatric ICUs, inpatient hospital units, and also the emergency department. Then after they finish their residency training, these pediatricians have to sit for a specialized licensing exam by the American Board of Pediatrics to become board certified. You can know your pediatrician is board certified by looking for the letters FAAP after their name um, or by using the American Board of Pediatrics verification tool listed below. If a pediatrician is not board certified, it could mean a couple of things. The first is that they are just out of their residency training and their um, board exam has not yet been finalized. That's usually within the first six months. The second option is they have not passed the board certification exam. And the third option is they have lost that board for certification for some reason. Yeah. And so if for whatever reason the pediatrician you're planning to see is not board certified, um, this might cause you to pause a little bit. Um, you can always ask them questions about it and they can let you know more about kind of if they are certified or not. Another group of doctors that care for babies and children are family doctors. Mm -hmm. This group of doctors also completes four years of medical school as well as three years of residency. Um, and while they don't have as much of that residency time dedicated specifically to pediatrics, they have the benefit of caring for all ages of patients mm -hmm. from birth until death, really. And so one of the advantages there, if you're seeing a family doctor, is that they can see your kiddo from birth through adulthood, as well as potentially you and all of your other children. And so that can be a really wonderful relationship for families for decades to come. Other great options for pediatric care providers are nurse practitioners, or NPs, uh, or PAs, which are physician assistants or physician associates. Um, now, for the sake and purpose of this discussion, we're going to put these two groups together, even though they've got different training and different background. So, basically, NPs or PAs can either practice as part of a family medicine or pediatrics group where they're supervised for a by a physician, or in some places they actually have the privileges and licensing to practice independently. Yeah. So these providers have the ability to get extra subspecialty training for care of pediatrics. Yes. Uh, for PAs, these are called the CAQ, or a Certification of Added Qualifications. Mm -hmm. um, for NPs, you want to make sure and look that they are a certified pediatric nurse practitioner. 
Um, I've worked with many uh, pediatric nurse practitioners and PAs in the pediatric world and would be more than happy to have either one of the, them uh, be the primary care provider for our baby to be. So how do you actually find a pediatric provider? Yeah, so as it turns out, uh, Google actually isn't a bad place to start okay. um, to look and see who provides pediatric care in your area. And as we talked about, when you are looking for an OB for mom, um, one of the easiest ways also is to just ask around. Ask at work, ask your friends, ask your OB's office. Um, and you can even look in online forums or Facebook groups in your area. Yeah, and remember that the advice that you get from these free sources is worth what you pay for it. So please be sure to check their certifications, which you can all find online. Um, if you're having trouble finding certification at all, um, it is totally okay to ask a provider's office for it. I would say one of the most common things that our friends have asked Kurt in terms of like pediatrician advice is actually who they should go see for their pediatrician. And that was much easier when we were in residency. Um, Kurt worked with and knew all the general pediatricians. We were there for four years, so he could really speak to people's personalities and practice styles and kind of try to match make, you know, our friends um, and who would be good for them to go see for their pediatrician. But now that we are here in fellowship in a new location, we, the playing field is leveled and we are here <laughs> just like regular parents trying to figure out who the heck we should go see for a pediatrician because we just don't know people yet. Kurt works with pediatric cardiologists, so not general pediatricians. And so I am doing what all of you are doing and asking friends, people I work with who to go see. And some of the greatest advice I have gotten is actually from my OBGYN. Um, she's a mom, she has four kids, and so she really has a lot of insider information on who the great pediatricians are in our area. So that's one to think about in addition to asking your girlfriends, people you work with, also ask your OBGYN if they have any recommendations about a pediatrician for you to see. So once you have that list of certified pediatric providers in your area, mm -hmm. then comes the difficult task of whittling it down and making that final choice. Um, so to help you do this, we came up with a list of six questions to ask. So the first one is, what type of group is it? Are there multiple providers? Am I going to see the same provider every single time? And while it is nice to get to see that same provider every time, know that if you have an urgent visit, you might not be seeing that provider if you need to get in same day. Yeah. Um, another really important question is what kind of office hours do they have? Uh, do they have night and weekend appointments available? And how hard is it to get a same day appointment? Number three is, um, what happens if you have a middle of the night concern? Is there a nurse or doctor line you can call? And then what kind of fees are associated with that service? Yeah. Um, another good question to ask is, will that pediatrician come and see you in the hospital before discharge with your new baby? Number five is what kind of philosophy and resources are available in your pediatrician's office for things like breastfeeding? How do they feel about vaccines? How do they feel about circumcision? Um, those are important things to make sure you guys click on. Yeah. And then finally, but and unfortunately, an important question to ask is do they take your insurance? Yeah. After all of this, and usually the most important part of the decision is that gut feeling of do you feel like you click with the provider you've chosen? Um, do you feel like you're going to be able to have open and honest communication and ask questions without feeling silly? Do you trust their medical advice? And if you ever feel like you have a concern, is that provider going to take time to listen to you? And so this is the important part where the pediatrician or the pediatric provider is the expert in pediatric medicine, yes. but you as the parent are going to be the expert in your child. No one is going to know them better than you. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I would say the two most important parts of picking a pediatric provider is number one, that they have the necessary experience and training uh, to provide pediatric medicine and care. Mm -hmm. And number two, that you have a trusting relationship with them with open communication. If you don't feel like you're finding these in the first person you meet or interview, um, please, if able, keep looking. And that is where there is an opportunity to be thinking about this before you have your baby. You can reach out to some of the different groups you're interested in to see if they have this kind of like meet the providers um, event where you it can, can be like an office visit yeah. or a Zoom call um, to sit down and meet them before baby comes. Even. Yeah. 
And so I think one thing though that we've met so many different pediatricians. They're just so nice. Work with NPs. These yeah. are people that work with children. And they and love kids. Hopefully you guys have an easy time finding yes. something that's gonna be perfect for you and your families. That's all we have this week. We hope this episode helps you choose a provider for your new baby that you are comfortable with. We will see y'all next week. Bye guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.